Buddhism. Um, I think sometimes if you are not in the order of the community, it can all seem uh, a little bit abstract and difficult to relate to. Um, just a, a quick kind of poll. How many of you know somebody on the autism spectrum? Quite a number of you, that's good. Um, but for those of you that don't, um, hopefully that you'll, you'll get something from this talk. Um, so, uh, this is kind of where I started from. So I was born uh, three months too early, uh, and I had ten disabilities. Um, and I'm, I think it's very important to be open, for me anyway, about my uh, disabilities, because you don't often meet somebody that will go up and, and be able to talk about it with you. So, um, throughout today, please come and talk to me because I'm, I'm very keen to, to talk to you. Um, so I went through mainstream school, uh, lots of children on the autism spectrum, which is very wide, uh, go into mainstream schools. They, uh, there are some children who have autism and learning disabilities, uh, there are some children who aren't able to speak, uh, and there are some children who um, have uh, ordinary, uh, uh, you know, well, in terms of schooling, they have a sort of ordinary um, access to schools. But there are many children who, who don't, in terms of that they find school very difficult to access. And obviously, children grow up into adults uh, and, and obviously become, uh, become adults. Uh, and for, for some people, as I said, school can be totally fine. But for other people, it's so difficult. It's the same with adult life. Um, some people get by, and, and there are a lot of adults who don't have a diagnosis, but equally, there are a lot of people that actually really do need a diagnosis and need to have their needs recognised. So autism is this massive um, spectrum. Um, so what is autism? Well, th well this slide um, comes from uh, Eric O'Shane, uh, and it's published in Autism and Facts, uh, which was published first in 1993 by Oxford University Press, and it's a book by Simon Van Cohen. Um, and autism is a, a neurological condition. I hate the word normal. I think that that's, that's very negative. Um, but what it means is typically developing. So there's a typically developing brain and an autistic brain. And really, this is just illustrating that autism is a neurological condition. It means that the brain is physically different. Um, so here's my story. So, um, and this is just an example you know, of, of, of what life can be like. I'm certainly, I can't talk for everybody on the autism spectrum because I'm not everybody, everybody is different. Uh, just as uh, you guys who are not autistic uh, in the autism world we call you neurotypicals. Um, <laughs> in neurotypicals don't know what every single other neurotypical experience is in, in a daily life. Um, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's the same. And that's why it's so important uh, to talk to or talk to the people around the person on the autism spectrum um, and to find out how they experience the world. So this is me in uh, 2005, uh, and I was thinking about the in-past spectrum because I really wanted to go to New York. Um, but as somebody on the autism spectrum, um, I have a lot of difficulties with very small things to other people, but they're very big to me. And I, I think it's really important uh, to, to be aware of the differences for people on the autism spectrum. Um, so, it all started with this guy here, uh, John Snow uh, from Channel 4 News. And uh, what happened was um, I started volunteering, actually. Uh, I, I was volunteering as a mentor. Uh, and then uh, slowly people started asking me to mentor their children uh, and that's how I got into working with young people and then I started working with adults and I was volunteering with the National Autistic Society uh, and I got asked to talk about the social skills training program at the University of California. Uh, and, uh, but basically I went on Channel 4 News, the head of support at university said would you like to apply for a travel trust? And I thought, hmm, why not? And I put down Los Angeles on the form, not thinking I'd get it. And I, I, I got an interview, and uh, I was given the Charlie Bain Travel Trust Award in 2008, and it was enough money to, to go to New York, which I thought was incredible. Um, so I had to ring UCLA, so I rang them, and said, hello, uh, my name is Robin, and I'm calling from England, if you couldn't tell from my accent. Um, and I was just wondering whether it would be possible to come and see the social skills training program here, and if I could give a talk. And do you know what they said? They said yes, um, which I thought was amazing, because here's this 21-year-old who hasn't really done much in life yet, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm going off to America. 
Um, my parents, when I said I want to go to New York, they were um, they kind of voiced their concerns. So I thought I'd better not tell them I was going to New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. So I didn't tell them. They found out three weeks before in a newspaper. <laughs> And then you've got to eat. 
Um, but, you know, so people on the autism spectrum um, really struggle with, uh, sometimes with food. Uh, some people, they only eat certain types of food. Uh, some people struggle with their sensory issues. And so I really struggled, uh, particularly for me anyway, with sensory issue textures are very important. And sometimes people will say, oh, well that's really OCD, which I think is a bit offensive towards people who have obsessive compulsive disorder, which is a mental illness that needs support and treatment. Um, because I, I, actually, you know, to have OCD, you need an obsession and a compulsion. Um, so, for, <laughs> so, uh, so for example, contamination might be something you're, you're, you're uh, afraid of. And so the compulsion would be to wash your hands, for example. Um, whereas the reason that I need my Weetabix made a certain way or, or can't tolerate certain textures is because if I try and do that, I'll throw up. It's not that I'm scared of throwing up, it's just that I know that that's what's going to happen. Um, and I had to have a friend who's an occupational therapist. Um, and when I came across taco for the first time, she suggested we do this. So she just split the taco up into, into different types of food. And now I can eat the taco the same as, as everybody else with, a, with all the food and textures mixed together. Um, and so that was really important because there are lots of foods like that uh, that had you know, different textures mixed up. Um, and, but you know, I must stress that everybody is different and what works for me might not work for anybody. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was language. So we know this probably as a car park, but in America it might be called a parking structure. Um, and so I'm sort of trying to give you directions, like, well, you walk down the sidewalk and then you need to turn right at the, the uh, truck, and then you need to turn left at the parking structure, and then you'll find the minivan. Well, that's not how somebody would say that in British English. And so this is something I actually had to learn, because I couldn't just guess what the person meant. Because obviously in England, I'd say, well, you go down the pavement, and then you turn right at the yellow lorry and then left at the car park and you'll see the minibus. You know, so even though the words are only slightly different, that was a big deal for me. Um, and so here's me in 2008 uh, at the top of the Empire State Building. Um, and so, you know, I went through all these challenges and to most people, yeah, most people would be scared to go to, to New York on their own, um, but I have other challenges. But also, it kind of works the other way around too, in that I um, find certain things that are easy. So public speaking, I'm not worried about this. This does not make me anxious, but being in a breakout space sat all on my own because I don't know how to talk to people, that makes me anxious. So please come and talk to me later. I really appreciate it. Um, so um, since going to America, um, I've also been to places like Russia, um, and uh, Denmark and Portugal and Canada and all sorts of places. Um, and I've really started to be able to sort of learn about how autism is thought of in different parts of the world. Um, I've also written a book which is about women on the autism spectrum and safety. Um, and I have a few copies with me that you're welcome to, to come and see me about later. Um, and I also have some comment cards as well, which you're welcome to fill in and take away my details. They, they tear off in the middle. Um, thank you so much for having me uh, speak. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I think what TEDx uh, in the University of Nottingham have done is really important. I hope from this talk that you can take something away um, that will be useful in your life. It's important not to expect everybody on the autism spectrum to be the same as me, because it's a wide spectrum and everybody is different. Uh, there are many people, and obviously you know, adults who have autism and learning disabilities who don't speak. There are also uh, people who don't have a learning disability, but autism uh, affects people in different ways and uh, people need support and need awareness. Uh, it's uh, Autism Awareness Week on the 27th of March and it's Autism Awareness Day on April the 2nd. Thank you very much.